five, four, three, two, one. FM lift off. Entered stage one burnout detect mode. We are at T plus 46 seconds, and there goes another electron on its way to space for this 20 second launch from the pad from Rocket Lab Launch Complex One. Soon the rocket will experience its peak amount of stress as it travels incredibly quickly over a large distance. This moment is called maximum aerodynamic pressure, or what's known as max Q, and is one of the first gates electron needs to clear to make it to orbit. And past max Q. And we have passed max Q and Electron is continuing the journey to space. Propulsion looks nominal on Electron's first stage as the rocket approaches the next major milestones of launch. In a few moments, Electron's nine Rutherford engines will throttle down and then shut off completely to slow the rocket down. This milestone is called Main Engine Cutoff, or MECO, and it occurs just before Electron's first and second stages separate. Once that's happened, very quickly, Electron's tenth engine on the second stage will light up to maintain its trajectory and continue carrying the two satellites to orbit. After these launch events are cleared, it's then that our rocket recovery operations begin with the booster's descent back to Earth. But first, let's wait to hear the call out from Mission Control that those events have occurred successfully. Fifteen seconds to Miko. Miko confirmed. Stage separation successful. Stage ignition. There you have it. Electron has had a successful Miko stage separation and second stage engine start. Stage 1 recovery operations will now proceed with the vehicle's successful stage separation. We are moments away now from Electron's fairing ejection. Let's keep an eye on our screens for that. Fairing separation confirmed. Electron's fairing has successfully separated as we get ready to deploy the two Black Sky satellites to their low Earth orbit within the hour. In about one minute or so, Electron's first stage will reach Apogee. Now, now, when the first and second stage is separated, Electron's booster is still travelling at such a speed that it continues moving upward before gravity begins to take over. So once Electron's first stage reaches Apogee, or its highest point, the only place for it to go next is back down. We should hear that call soon from Mission Control. Okay, we are just past T plus four minutes into flight, and Electron Stage 2 is traveling nominally at a speed of over 8,000 kilometers an hour and an altitude of over 167 kilometers. In less than a minute, Electron's first stage should reach Apogee with, an, with orientation of the stage underway as planned. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Stage one apogee. 
And with Apogee confirmed, Electron's first stage is officially on its earthward trajectory. The next milestone in our recovery operations will be the deployment of the first shoot on Electron's booster. We'll stick with the camera views on the rocket for as long as we can, but a reminder we do expect them to cut out at some point on that return. Meanwhile, Electron's second stage engine is burning bright and beautiful on the way to orbit. The vehicle is currently at speeds of more than 10,000 kilometres per hour and an altitude of more than 200 kilometres. We have got some good telemetry coming in for how Electron is traveling to low Earth orbit. If you are just joining us, our 22nd mission is going well so far, with the second stage traveling at more than 11,000 kilometers per hour, more than 214 kilometers above Earth. Electron's booster is now on the correct angle of attack to re-enter the atmosphere from space, where it separated with the, kick, uh, the second stage as per normal launch procedure a few moments ago. All systems are continuing to perform well across both stages of the vehicle. Our next launch event will be the battery hot swap set to take place on Electron's second stage. Because our Rutherford engines maintain their power source from batteries, at a certain point those batteries run out of charge. So we need a fresh new one to keep the engine running. And what we do is we swap the power from the depleted batteries to a third fully charged one, all while keeping the second stage moving at more than 13,000 kilometres an hour. We'll hear that moment called out through mission control shortly before we expect to hear the next recovery operation milestone, that deployment of the Drogue parachute. Let's listen in. Swap successful. Battery jettison confirmed. And stage to propulsion is holding nominal. And there we go, that we had the good news of battery hot swap there on the Electron's second stage. Next up in recovery operations will be the main parachute release. We should be hearing that call shortly. AFDS has saved. HVB discharge holding nominal. Stage one main shoot deploy. The parachute on Electron's booster has successfully deployed and so our recovery helicopter is in the air on its way to get a glimpse of the booster coming back to Earth. All going well, the first stage should now glide gently toward the ocean, remaining in the air for another 10 minutes or so from the parachute's release. We'll bring you visuals from the helicopter if we can. Right now though, high above stage one recovery, Electron's primary mission is continuing nominally with the second stage powering its way to low Earth orbit. In under two minutes, this stage will be approaching its next event, Second Engine Cutoff, or SECO, and then separation from its orbital transfer vehicle, the Kick Stage, which will carry the two Black Sky satellites to their destination. We won't have an immediate engine burn on the Kick Stage following that separation, as it goes into a coast phase while it's in an elliptical orbit before its Curie engine ignites and jolts it into a circular path for payload deployment. We'll wait to hear that SAGE separation call for, come from Mission Control shortly. Guidance is in terminal, 25 seconds remaining.
And seeker confirmed. Stage three separation confirmed. Nominal transfer orbit, orbit received. There you go, another smooth achievement of our latest mission milestone. The Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage has shut down as planned, and the kick stage has now separated on its way to payload deployment in about 45 minutes or so. Meanwhile, we are getting some views from the helicopter of Electron coming back to Earth. Hopefully we'll see that soon under a parachute. Our helicopter's role here is to maintain a visual connection for as long as it can to record data of the first stage that will help refine our operations for future Electron aerial capture attempts. Electron has around eight minutes left in the air before it reaches the ocean. We are going to take a break now, though, while the kick stage enjoys its coast phase around the Earth. Unfortunately, we won't have a live video feed of payload deployment on this mission, but we will stay with you on this webcast to bring you a simulated view of that occurring. That's expected to take place at around T plus 55 minutes into the mission. And of course, any updates we have on the final moments of our recovery operations, we'll bring them to you here live while we wait the end of the mission. Uh, but we will leave you with views from the helicopter if we can keep them up from the splashdown zone as long as we can. And I'll see you back here soon. There we go, the top hat has been ejected, clearing the way for the final deployment on this mission of the second Black Sky payload. That should take place in around 30 seconds or so, so let's wait for the call from our operators. And Global 15 deployment confirmed. There's some great news there that the second Black Sky satellite has successfully deployed by Electron on this Love at First InSight mission. So with both satellites successfully deployed, that completes tonight's 22nd Electron mission and officially brings the count of satellites deployed by Rocket Lab to 107.